must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Good afternoon, viewers. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, all of you watching, taking notes. Good afternoon, students of governance in all universities across the world, wherever you are, will pick up a copy of this open lecture. Good afternoon, Senators of the Republic of Kenya, who are right now struggling to find a solution to one of the components of devolution, revenue allocation and sharing. Good afternoon, wherever you are in Nigeria, one of the states in Africa with a revenue collection from states where devolution has worked successfully in terms of political management, transfer of powers, and the transfer of same autonomous states within a state within a unitary state. First of all, one of the doubting tasks of Kenya, or one of the doubting tasks that the government of Republic of Kenya has faced since 18, what President Uru Kenyatta has faced is the question of devolution is the balancing act of devolution. How do you balance devolution with a unitary state? The challenges that have before in Kenya, the government of Republic of Kenya, have come as a result of the very factors that devolution cannot work without evolution. Maybe the people of Kenya might have taken one step forward too fast. Maybe the people of Kenya were not even prepared to receive devolution. Maybe the format of devolution that was given to Kenya that creates conflicts across the world might have been the format that has caused the trouble, the sentiments, the new antagonism that you see between the senators, among the senators, the counties, the unitary state. I want to start from the onset to tell you that Kenya is a unitary state. When I listened to President Uru Kenyatta giving his inaugural speech in the parliament on 16th of April 2013, after winning an election, the first parliamentary speech, at that time I felt I should come in and discuss one of the obstacles that have haunted me in the Kenyan Constitution. The Kenyan Constitution is a good document. But it is a document that littered with pitfalls of Catch-22 that could bring structural conflicts. 
It is upon the people of Kenya themselves to sit down and look at these pitfalls in their constitution. The debate on devolution, money allocation, revenue allocation, hinges on three factors. In this open lecture, I'm going to say my opinion, what I feel as a person who knows, who has studied some form of governance with experience and examples given from Uganda, from Israel, from other states in Nigeria, from India, the types of devolution that we have, a decentralized system, a decentralized system in Nigeria, for example, a decentralized system in Uganda, what has it created? Devolution without the hinge pin, without the pin, the hinge that catches the unitary state with the developed states or counties can create a conflict. Viewers, it is for this and those students taking notes worldwide that one has to understand what is devolution? What are you devolving? What are the devolved units? What type of units you want to devolve? You can't devolve foreign affairs ministry. You develop issues that touch so many beings. You don't develop land. You use geographical boundaries to develop so many beings occupying that land. I want to emphasize this. You use the data, the technology, the boundaries, to develop a certain area. But who occupies the, the developed geographical catchment? So many beings. I come from a country where decentralization have taken shape the difference between devolution and the decentralization is equals to evolution. I want you to mark one thing, that you cannot devolve without evolution. Neither can you evolve and leave devolution. If we look at, at the current if we look at the current situation. If we look at the current situation of Kenya, look at what has been developed, what ministries have been developed, what units are on the ground, agriculture is developed, Ministry of Health is developed, hospitals love developed in devolution, Same tax collection has been developed. Some areas of tax collection by 
de los Caucasos a these the obstacles and the challenges on the ground overweighing the evolution. Most of the most of the counties in Kenya have not completed the devolution map. They have not evolved the institutions that are supposed to go hand in hand with evolution, with devolution. For example, there are counties in this country that don't pay their job workers, health workers, nurses, is a devolved unit. There are counties in this county that have never even put a paid on some of the hospitals. Is a devolved unit. Agriculture is a devolved unit. According to the Kenyan constitution, these are units that are supposed to be looked at as a model of same having some autonomy, but controlled by the central unitary system. Unlike in Nigeria, where state governors can make decisions go out and borrow money if they want. The Kenyan type of devolution caps the managers and the governors from external borrowing and taking on loans from other institutions without the consent of the unitary state, which is the government. From this, and before I go further, and before I go to the academic discourse on devolution, I want to thank Kenyans for having accepted a handshake and a, an exhibition of national unity and a peace during and after March 9th, 2018. I told you, it is very important for you to take notes that devolution, there was something in Kenyan devolution that did not match with the entire system. There's something in the constitution that brings about the difficulties that we see here today. There's something that does not work. There's something that is missing. What is that missing? An observer in Kenyan's constitution, no arrangement. Sorry. An observer will find that something is missing. This public lecture wants to bring out this thing called national unit. What is the nat what is national unit? What is national resemblance? You have developed 47 counties. But does Kenya speak with a national language? Does Kenya practice with a national custom? Does Kenya allow, or does the constitution of Kenya allow tribal settings, which become an impediment 
to the unity that the devolution wanted to create. We are placed bottlenecks around the heart of devolution. One of the bottlenecks is the presence of tribal kingpins. You cannot do devolution with tribal kingpins. Part of the problem today, which you saw flowing on the floor of the Senate, is tribalism. Tribal king, kingpins arrived on the Senate. If you see the way they speak, the way they act, the way they pretend to be loving the country, Kenya, you would agree with me that the Constitution of Republic of Kenya created a big problem. And I want my students, those who requested for this lecture, to take note that the speeches that are made on the floor, yet the Constitution said every senator represents 47 counties. But how do they speak in the Senate? They speak as though each county has its own senator. They have killed the evolution. They have destroyed national unity. The phrase of national unity has been dismembered on the floor in the Senate. Such a phrase in your constitution would help the need of a disintegration of a state. There must be serious education on the question of devolution. Then the transitional committee that was put there to educate people of the roles of a new setup of a Kenya having failed in 1963 and 64 to come up with Majimbo we were expected to have enough political education Kenyans should have been given enough civic education of the roles of devolution are you serving two masters are you paying allegiance to two people? Within a state, is the governor also speaking on your behalf? At the same time, the president is speaking on your behalf. How do you then relate this, put these two together to form and a unite, create a unitary state which is formidable. It is very important. Former President Kibaki was very right in appointing county commissioners. To me, one thing that kills my, my heart every time I arrive in Kenya is the number of political warlords called balkanized state a state balkanized by devolution a state where each county is run by each son or daughter. I believe most of you have seen the problems that we have today. We have huge problems because our son is the governor. We have huge problems because our son is in charge of billions of shillings. We have 
huge problem because our son is from our clan and the other clan is not happy. We have huge problems in Kenya because our son is being targeted because he's from a clan of the editors who don't like the other clan. How do you solve this problem? How do you remove? How do you remove and put a caveat on a link? A link. There is something missing in the link. What is missing between devolution and the unitary state is the unit of purpose. Friends. The unit of purpose is the one making governors, making senators almost fight on the floor of the National Assembly, of the Senate. Had we got that phrase of national unity, as a message by the BBI, which is going to come, there would be no friction of which money and how much money would be taken by it. So, and so. But because we don't have it, that friction has come and it is boiling, it is here with us. It has created seven times a failure of people agreeing on how much money they want to take. It is therefore to my students, those watching me, the university students doing the governance course, I want to take your keywords. What lacks in the Kenyan constitution is the phrase of national unit. Yet it is the preamble of the national anthem of this country, Kenya. What you have done in Kenya is you have created a state. You have created several states running balkanized Buruk states with each state having its own kingpin, paramount kingpin as a governor. You have killed national unity. That's why you see today, people cannot agree to share the money because each one wants to take for his people, not for our people. You create take for our people, people, not our people. In India, people take for our people. In Israel, people take for our people. In German, people take for our people. In Uganda, people take for our people. The decentralized system allows taking for our people. In Kenya, each governor says, my people. If you remove this, I will also remove this. If you want us to pay for this, you must also pay for this. That is the nature of conflict that could arise if Kenya does not change that phrase, does not change and put in a place a phrase that would unite Kenyans. President Kibaki appointed the commissioners to coordinate national intelligence and other activities that are of national interest of a unitary state. The role of the chief and the other administration is clearly stipulated in the constitution. Part of what, killed, what has killed Africa is the shrinkage of constitutionalism. 
and the sense of tribal juvenilism, where losers of elections appeal to their tribal cocoons and the cronies to cause havoc against the winners of such elections. That has destroyed Africa. That has destroyed Africa. That has destroyed Kenya until the BBI came in place. The tribe of juvenism, the tribe of cocoons, the enclaves, all what you have done is to put fire in the counties by appointing Oparanya as the governor of Kagamega of the Maragori people. You are put fire oil by appointing Nano, the governor, the tribesman, who is the governor of Tukana. When there is anything that goes wrong, the tribe cries, and the governor comes to say, my people, not our people. We are trying to find the root causes of why. Don't worry, my paper will be public. It will be publicized because it's a well-detailed paper that I have been working on. It has pained me so much that every time I come to Kenya, you hear of a, bo a political Balkanized state with tribal incentives. Devolution is very good. But you can have devolution without having the governors who come from their own counties. The case of the previous system, if you had the governor Joho, as a commissioner for Tukana, how much development would have been in Tukana? Plenty. If you had Governor Waparanya as a, an ex official on the county commission, on the county assembly, how much would have been done? In Kiambu, for example, plenty of it. Because the governor of Pranya would fear the people of Kiambu. There would be no section in Kiambu. Once the money is lost, the world wake up to ask Governor Oparanya to explain what happened. But in any of these counties. Once you ask the money where it went, one clan will stand against another clan to say that clan is against our person. You retard development. You retard the same value of why you wanted devolution to go to the people. Looking at, we have developed, developed, developed all the areas. Look at the governors from northeastern and the marginalized so-called states of Kenya. Three quarters of their time they are in Nairobi. Seven years, ten years of devolution. 10 years of devolution from the constitution up to today. They have not put institutions in their places. And the yet money has been pumped in those places. They, but they are all focused to Nairobi. The meetings that are supposed to be conducted 
should be conducted. Thanks God, this situation of Corona has come in now. The people of Kenya will save quite a lot of money. They will save quite a lot of money. By looking at saving money of air transport, convoys of cars driving into Nairobi, of a matter that could be solved over telephone call. The people of Kenya will save money because there will be no more meetings of that nature. Meetings now are virtual meetings. We talk on virtual systems. We will save money. The governor of Masabik can make a telephone conversation over Zoom of a webinar with another governor without traveling to Nairobi. But most three quarters of the governors are in Nairobi. Why? Why? Why do they come to Nairobi? We are paying for mileage. We are paying for per diem. The country is paying colossal amounts of money. This is where the Senate should look into how to stop that money that they are crying for, the money that they want to take to the counties, where the money is going, how is it being spent. You can't tell me today there is no governor. Some governors have no structures of paying doctors. Doctors are not being paid. It's a shame. There's no payroll for doctors. There are some doctors and health workers who are still looking for money. Their salaries of two years ago. Is this the devolution that you want? Devolution without evolution. Forget it. Kenyans, forget it. You develop a state, a county without the evolution of institutions. Forget it. The mess that you have today is as a result of that. The quarrel that you see on the floor of the Senate is a result of that. You ran one thing faster than the other. We ran devolution without evolution. We did not have institutions on the ground to safeguard the devolution. We have put devolution on a shaky ground in our counties. Yet the people have liked it, they have seen it, they want to have it, and they want to continue with devolution. Devolution should not be used by elite to destroy national unity. That's why some states like the Ugandan system, Museven devolved the leadership, but remained with the decentralized system that kept power. People have asked, for example, in this, during this COVID-19, Museven receives briefing from all corners because he has got the chiefs, LOC 1, LOC 2, LOC 3, LOC 4. Then on top of that, of a district which we could call a county in Kenya, he has another DC. 
The RDC has a hotline that speaks directly to the president. Such that if a thief enters a, the country of Uganda, such that if animals are stolen in Karamoja, President Museveni in Kampala will know that animals were stolen, they were taken across to Ghana, to West Pocot, or other areas. Decentralized the system, but managed the authority using the unitary state. My students, those watching, and those interested in this subject of devolution and evolution, we have got to look at the Constitution of Republic of Kenya, find out what is it that made Kenyans to balkanize themselves into tribal enclaves. The governor of Siaya is Rasanga. The governor of Kisumu is Anyanganyong. The governor of Bungoma is Wangamati. Wangamati, Rasanga, Anyanganyong come from the area. Are we fighting tribalism? Or are we enhancing nationalism, patriotism? We are dividing the country into enclaves of tribal units. The only two counties that you find, or three counties that you find, a cosmopolitan nature of life is Nairobi, Mombasa, his, um, Nakuru, because in Nakuru you have two. You can you you can call that a cosmopolitan area where you find the governor comes from another angle, the councillors from another tribe, but the rest of the tribes, the rest of the counties, there is no national unity. The governor of Nairobi is not from Nairobi. Mr. Sonko runs a county where it has several millions of other people. So three counties in the whole of Kenya qualify for national unity. So we planted tribal politics. We enhanced tribal politics. The governor of Mandela is from Mandela. You, see, you hear every day people crying for teachers to return to Mandela. <laughs> and going to Mandela looks like you are going to another country. Are we bringing unity surely? A teacher teaching in Mandela looks more worried about teaching in Mandela or Wanji or Isoro because we have created that the people of Mandela should be the ones to control their affairs is the Constitution of Republic of Kenya, a valid document? Is it a valid document that allowed us to fight instead of uniting? Does it unite the people of Kenya? How many governors in this county can do virtual meetings in this country? How many governors 
can save a shilling of the taxpayer. How many governors of this money that you are crying? Look at this euro, for example. It has an abattoir. For seven years, this abattoir has not even cut one goat, one goat or one cow. The people of Isioro have to drive their animals into Nairobi slaughterhouses. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Are we looking for money to go and put it where? In institutions, yet there are areas that need those institutions. You cannot divide the money using the mass of a land. And we are failing to tell people the truth. That's why we are having a, hard, a problem. Let the people know that the money is not shared for land, using land. It is shared using the number of people, so many beings, who are superior in this land. And that's a reality. You can go to Angel Gabriel, dance with him, and ask. Because the class struggle was created by not us, by God. Otherwise, before God, we are the same. But on earth, we are not. There are people who are producing more. There are people who are producing less. There are minority and a majority. Even in Greece, where Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, the Max Weber's in Britain, Adam Smith, they found these inequalities. The question, therefore, what has been killing this country from time to time? What has been killing Kenya is the lack of that phrase, national unit. People are never united. They only unite when there is sports, when Kenya is having a marathon in London and it is winning a medal. All of us, including us foreigners, stand up and celebrate. After the marathon is over, we run back to our national cocoons. You become I, not we. This has put a government under siege. A unitary state remains besieged by devolution and the lack of evolution in those developed units. It has forced time and time again, like as we see now, the president and the, the, the former prime minister coming now down because there is something missing. Why, why are they coming down on the MPs, on the senators? It's because we have missed the hinge, the pin, the pins, the bricks of devolution is evolution. The strongest brick, brick of evolution is devolution. The strongest of devolution is evolution. You can't separate the two. The moment you start separating, remove devolution from evolution, you have a problem. It is therefore my submission I have never seen 
in my political science lessons and the lectures, a unitary state that loses power to units. You cannot have it. You cannot have it. Even in India, where there are same autonomous states, type of devolution, the central government in India picks, has authority, has the powers over those same autonomous states. They conduct elections on the same day. They value national issues on the same day. They eat on the same day. I therefore submit that a unitary state is a state that is de jure. A de jure state remains the unit that governs the entire system of devolution. The formal authority lies with national institutions, like the CRA, which is mandated to find a formula. After CRA has found a formula, why do you, you don't, you can't come and say no. Yet you have given them the powers to discuss the matters. You can modify, you can recommend. For example, there is one thing that kills me in this debate. You want a, suff a suffrage, one man, one vote, one shilling. One man, one vote. It's a universal suffrage. Then why do you cut off a shilling? How many people wake up to go and vote for half a loaf? I don't know in your villages when you wake up to vote, your MP, you vote him on a half to bring you half a loaf. All of us go to vote for a loss. Whatever constituency, whatever county you are in, you are voting your MP with one man and one vote, one ballot paper. You take one. And at least there are two elections within one. It's when you can take two ballot papers. Because the basic institution that has determined that it, this money must be given to human beings. Money is not given to trees. You can't give money to trees. You can't give money to landmass of geographical. I saw Senator Murkomen talking of the geographical Kenya. Yes, the geographical Britain comes as far Gibraltar in Spain, almost. That's what they see. A small island has a sea up to that level, over 6,000 miles of ocean water. But Britain, when they are allocating their money, they don't allocate the money up for the sea. They allocated the money of the population they have in each area, in each Congo. One of the Congos is Wales, another Congo is Scotland, another Congo is the Irish. These Congos are not given their equalization fund 
most of you who have gone to Britain, when you live in Scotland, the amount of tax collected by the Scottish National Assembly does not come to Westminster. It is utilized there, but Westminster gets some money to equalize Scotland of a shortfall. And they have been remaining together for a long time. From time of Mario, almost 2,000 years now, the Scottish have been having Scotland has developed. Scotland has Edinburgh, Glasgow, Wales has got Cardiff and other cities. Big city, big development, almost equaling the development on the mainland Europe, uh, on mainland Britain. It's because of equalization fund. Northern Ireland, if you go to Belfast, the city is sm smart, beautiful, overlying the Atlantic Ocean. You enjoy. If you go across to Edinburgh, Glasgow, and Venice, those cities up in Scotland, The geographical regions need development when a human being is the one directing the development. It is not the geographical region that directs the development. It's a human being who directs the development. And therefore, the number of people in those geographical areas are the ones going to utilize the airport in his Europe. Kenya has an airport in its Europe. I would like to see how many Kenyans use the airport to go to its Europe to see the animals or whatever is in its Europe. Every day we have a flight at the Wilson Airport, but the people choose to drive and the airport is there. If you go there during daytime in the morning, 10 o'clock, 11, the airport is occupied by baboons, monkeys, they have all come from nearby forests. They are there seated, enjoying basking in the sunshine. Is that development? What does that airport, if that airport was in an area, look at the airport in Eldoret. A lot of imports, flowers, are picked from Eldoret 25 minutes to 30 minutes, they are in Nairobi. The next one hour, they are on a flight all the way out to Netherlands. That is what you create as you pick flowers. You are creating employment in the area. But tell me which area, which area, which, the, what, what does the airport in Isiolo help the people of Isiolo? The regions need, the people in the regions need development, not the region. I think we are getting this very clear. The people need, this is the human being there who needs a hospital. The tree will not tell you I want a hospital. <laughs> so why are we avoiding the debate of a human being? The human being in Isioro needs a hospital. The road from Nairobi tree through Isioro up to that area has opened the people. Therefore, people are going to build houses, not the roads, not, not the road building houses, but because of the road, people put the road, houses, shops, trading centers along the road will make development in Isioro. I want to submit. There are guidelines what devolution and developed counties can do. The local developed counties cannot pass laws that supersede 
or bypass with the variance, at the variance with the national government. Two, they must not have legal uniformity. Three, must be one of one sovereign entity called the country. They must always remember that. D, they must remember the county governments are prohibited from cutting themselves away from the unitary state. E, laws regular legislated at the county governments are limited to the county authorities, like a collection of taxes. I want to ask my viewers and my students, how many, how much money? I want next, when we come back for the next lesson, how much money have these counties collected? How much money, for example, the county of Baringo, how much do they collect from the animals that are brought to Nairobi in the Goret Center? How much do they collect from the markets? From the car parks? There is a formula. Once you collect more, you get an equalizing fund. We give you as how much you want. But if a county is collecting less, if a county is allowing rates, water rates, water is coming, it is giving it for free. Do you give them money? Does a person in areas, a person in his solo will need a tent and a borehole? Because it's a nomadic area. You don't need a permanent brick house in his yoro. To do what? You need it in town, maybe. But you are always with animals moving for pasture, for water and the grass for your animals. Therefore, you need boreholes. You need more boreholes sunk in, dug in Isiolo, or Masabit, or Samburu, or Mandela, or Moyale. You need more boreholes. You need water for your animals. Then produce more and more and more milk and more meat for export. You don't need five-star hotels. Nobody will come to stay there. Very few people stay even in their houses. If you go to most of these counties up county, some people prepare to hire lodges. This is a reality. It is therefore my submission. If you want to read about the evolution, study Article 126, 186, subsect Article 3, you'll find out of your constitution. Another article you must look at, Article 190, sub Article 2 of your constitution. It will bring you answer these questions. Article 1, 212 of your constitution will bring you sub article A. It says the county government can borrow only if national government guarantees the loan and with approval of the government assembly. Article 209 states that the only national government, it is only national government that can impose income tax, value added tax, customs, and other duties on import and export goods exercise tax. 
These articles, Kenyans need to read them. Article 192, sub Article 1, provides that the president may suspend a county government. Those are articles you must read. I can see a lot of fight in Nairobi, but that article covers the government and the procedure. I therefore believe the president Uru Kenyatta will deliver a dream to the marginalized and the majority. There are two, the majority and the minority. The majority have the majority, but the minority have the say. It is therefore important that when you are serving a balance must be put on emphasis of money being paid out of one man, one vote, one loaf. If you want to add, people don't wake up to go and vote to eat air. Those who are few, equalization fund can work out like in Britain, like in America, like in South Africa, like in India. The Indian government always equalizes poorer states where hardships are. We should create a hardship fund to avoid politics of compensation Compensation of politics has killed Kenya's dream of devolution. If you go, you come in with a compensation, the error to compensate because we did not have it. We need to take it now. It is sad. It is sad. And therefore, I want to thank all of you. To leave you with this main point. One, devolution cannot work without evolution. Let the counties start putting institutions that will safeguard devolution. Pay masters, pay roles of doctors. Some counties don't have payroll for doctors. Some doctors have abandoned their stations and gone home. Yet, a developed service is the Ministry of Health. Coronavirus is killing people. Some counties don't have even beds. Some counties don't have bed sheets. Some counties don't have even toilet paper. But the governors are looking for the money. When this money comes, they first pay other bills. But when the pandemic reaches a proportion where hospitals will be needed, I don't know what explanation we shall give to our people. It's therefore very, very important. My document, my paper will be posted on my, on my blogs. I have about four. I'll post it on Matanga Leaks, Open African Forum, or the Legacy Trend for students who want to, to pick some material. Look at those articles. I'll post this document even on the same platform. I want to thank you so much. There are people who say the health institution must return to the national government. 
because the same, the this developed units cannot manage the institution of people's lives. That is a debate. That is an open lecture that I can again organize. And in the future, we shall announce the name. We shall put across the Zoom live here. Let it take about a minute. Zoom, you take the number, you take part in the discussions, you ask the questions. That is the way we are going to be operating for a long time. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have listened to me for one hour and 13 minutes of my, your time. I hope you have picked up something from this discussion. East or West, the population is the best unit of allocating money. It is not the land mass. That's my argument. And I leave it to all of you Kenyans. It is your money. The president and the former prime minister are hammering out a 50-50. But for how long you can hammer it to 50-50? Only God knows. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless Africa. This station, therefore, this lecture comes to an end. We shall bring more. Those students who have picked whatever you have, thank you very much. We shall try from next week at 3 p.m. There will be a lecture on different aspects. There could be a lecture on the question of international diplomacy. There could be a lecture on that is what I'm going to do to help students out there who have questions. And also, if you have questions to ask, don't feel Fill your questions. Ask them. I want to thank Ina Hassan. Five stars hotels are personal investment. Yes, but they personal investment, but if you invest them in Isoro, who will sleep there? <laughs> People will, if you invest, you should also know where to invest in Ian Ina Hassan. Invest in Mombasa. If you put a five-star hotel in Mombasa, don't be you in five years you will have another ten five-star hotels. But if you put it in Moyale, who is going to sleep there? Let's talk facts and let's not think of anything other than thank you very much. All of you have been watching. This is a very important topic touches the people of of the world, Kenya and where it is. If you have a topic in your county, if you have a topic in your country, if you have a topic in Uganda, if you have a topic about the scientific elections, next week we shall look at those elections. If people have been fighting on physical elections, don't you think it will be very dangerous on a scientific election? How many people will die if there is an argument over the votes cast? I think we have a problem, and I leave it to God. Thank you very much. Thank you, the production team back in the studio in, in Nairobi. Thank you very much, all of you, for having stayed longer. It's a few hours from where we are. God bless you. See you on Sunday. Thank you.
must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us.